Hey everyone, this is GQ Recommends. And today we are going to talk about sunglasses. So today we're going to break down in detail four essential categories of sunglasses that you should be familiar with, not only this season, but every season going forward. The all-time classics. These are the sunglasses that just work. You think about the Wayfarer, the Clubmaster, a pair of Purse Souls. A lot of these sunglasses have been around for a long time. They look good and they have a lot of history to them. These are the sunglasses that you can grab and always feel comforted in that you're going to look cool. They're tried and true classics for a reason. Yeah, definitely. And in particular, the one we're looking at here, the Ray-Ban Clubmaster, which is perhaps the most legendary of them all for good reason. They're a super legendary shape that really took off in the 50s and 60s. As regular eyeglasses, they kind of have this Ivy League look to them, which is super cool without being overly point dexter. Towards the latter half of that decade, they also became popular as sunglasses. Guys like Malcolm X very famously wore them, and they've kind of stood the test of time because they are an almost universally flattering silhouette. No matter which way your style skews, they come in a bunch of different colors, they're fairly reasonably priced for the quality you're getting, and they're stamped with the Ray-Ban sign of quality, which is pretty hard to beat. On the other end of the spectrum, you have a brand like Persol. In some ways, Ray-Ban's Italian counterpart. Do you want us to walk us through the most legendary silhouette from Persol's deep repertoire? Yeah, for sure. Persol is another really iconic brand. You might have seen this on guys like Steve McQueen. This is sort of an aviator style, which comes in a lot of different materials and slightly different shapes, but this style was really born for military pilots to really cover more of the face and block out more sun. A lot of race car drivers actually thought this silhouette really worked well driving their fast cars. Do I look fast? You look super fast, man. I drive a Ford Focus. What can you tell us about this last pair? Well, I'm glad you asked, Gerald, because these are one of my personal favorites. This is a Wayfarer-style pair of sunglasses from the French eyewear experts at Jacques Marimage. They're handmade in Japan out of some of the finest quality materials on the planet. You know that they're going to last you for years provided you can keep your hands on them and won't lose them in the back of a taxi. There are some sunglasses that are made from straight up just plastic, like the same kind you would get from a water bottle or something. These are not that. They feel weighty, they feel dense, they don't feel brittle, like they're just gonna snap on you. But then, you know, you get into sunglasses that are like wire frame sunglasses that are really thin and lightweight. That doesn't necessarily mean it's of poor quality, but get a pair of sunglasses and it feels pretty weighty, it's probably not a bad sign. But along with the higher quality materials, you also get a lot of details that you probably won't see on cheaper alternatives. So there's this nice gold trim here. The color in particular is also like this rich shade of almost mocha brown that's hard to come by in this particular tint. The Technicolor Tint. The all-time classics are always a safe bet. We really like those silhouettes, but if you're looking for sunglasses with a little bit more personality, you could also play around with not only shape, size, and silhouette, but color. They're not for the faint of heart, but if you can get past the bright colors, they're actually pretty easy to pull off. This first pair is from a brand called Sun Buddies. Pretty affordable and like the quality is really great for the price too. Not so crazy as far as the silhouette goes, but what does stand out is this, I don't know, kind of like magenta-ish color. <laughs> they look great. It, thanks. This color is not something you usually see every day. It's not the usual tortoise shell. It's not boring gray. It ups the ante considerably. Yeah, for sure. These are the Blue Isimo sunglasses from Retro Super Future, which is a really cool brand that we like a lot that also makes fairly affordable sunglasses. They've got a sleek outline. They're kind of squared off at the top and a little bit rounded at the bottom. They work well on most face shapes. And like we were saying before, they've got this mid-aughts energy that's really hot right now. I could easily see Fever wearing these. I like it because it is a little bit curved at the bottom, which I think softens the angularity of the frames. But yes, this smaller frame with the very flat top is something we're seeing a lot of lately. I personally love another brand 
called Aquila. These are some of my own sunglasses. This brand makes a lot of different frames, yeah, really cool. fashion forward. They also do have some classics, of course, as any good sunglass brand should. Most of their sunglasses are around 120 bucks, really good quality, and you can find a bunch of them in you know the full spectrum, lens tints and frame colors. These look sick with your current outfit. <laughs> yeah, I guess I didn't really plan that out, actually. <laughs> well, what would you normally wear these with? I would generally keep everything else pretty chill. That being said, you liked how this looks, matching my shirt, and do that too. Well, I think it's because the elements of your outfit are already pretty pared down. Like, it's essentially just a sure. white tee and like neutral color cargos, but the flannel and the sunglasses level it up. These are sick. Thanks. So if you think this category is a little too wild, just stop the video now, exit, find something else, because we're gonna get even crazier in just a second. The Total Swerves. These are the wild style sunglasses. They've been around in one form or another for decades. You can see them on people like Brad Pitt, Pharrell. They pack a lot of style per square inch into a very small silhouette. And that's kind of cool. There's not really a category for this on, you know, whatever retail site you're looking at. So <laughs> these are just wild sunglasses. It's not a specific shape. It's not a specific color or brand or whatever. If your style tends to skew more pared down and you don't really like to go big with the rest of your outfit, this is a perfect way to flex your taste and show up everyone else wherever you happen to be. This first pair is from a brand called Brain Dead, which all around makes really dope stuff. <laughs> this hits on a lot of different points. The lenses are super reflective and like crazy, almost mirror-like. The frames are like this slime green sort of take on turtle shell. That bit of hardware on the lenses is super cool. Um, I think actually, I think Kim Kardashian wore a pair of these. This style is called the Mutant, which, I mean, if there's any way to really swerve in this category, it's with something like this. It's a deceptively approachable frame, yeah. mostly because the silhouette itself is pretty universally flattering. So if you can look past or in fact embrace everything else going on, it's going to look good on your face. You want to tell us about this next pair? So these are actually from Cutler and Gross, which mm -hmm. I think you and I both really like. It's one of the premier names in higher end sunglasses. They don't come cheap. They're almost 500 bucks. But again, they come with a pedigree that is pretty hard to beat in the sunglasses space. They're super high quality. They feel really hefty in your hand, but not so hefty that they'll weigh down your face when you're wearing them. What I really dig about these is that they are heavily doused with like retro peak 70s energy. So you see a lot of guys wearing these on the red carpet, people like Anderson Pack and Bruno Mars. I feel like these types of sunglasses are the sort of shades you want to throw on when you're going to like a destination wedding with a pretty lax dress code where you have free reign to add a little personality to your fit. I don't know if I would wear them to a more conventional black tie wedding or a funeral. Yeah, probably not. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that either. I don't <laughs> think stunting on the bereaved is necessarily in good taste. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away, my man. From a Japanese brand called Matsuda, known for really intricate sunglasses. They're not all necessarily as wild as this, but I mean, straight from the jump, geez. These are based off of vintage welding sunglasses, all metal. It's like very steampunk. I actually have another pair of Matsudas that are not at all like this. They have a really wide range of styles and silhouettes. If the pair that you like flies against the conventional wisdom, whatever the keyboard warriors are telling you looks best on your face shape, so be it. You should commit wholeheartedly and whatever makes you feel the most confident is the pair you should rock with. Yeah, agreed. So Gerald, the Matsuda pair that you were just talking about I think these are like 1500 bucks, right? <laughs> yeah. Which is an objectively absurd amount of money to spend on sunglasses. I don't think either you or I would fork over that money so easily without a second thought. What's great about this category is that it ranges so wide and you can find plenty of sunglasses that are really cool and really swervy at lower price points. We really like a brand called Crap Eyewear, as funny as the name is. Uh, they make some really cool sunglasses, you know, just around a hundred bucks or even less. The Sporting Life. 
these sunglasses come from a place of pure function. A lot of them are built for the specific type of activity you'll be wearing them in. Shag and fly balls, <laughs> running into the end zone. Or just running into your homies on the way to pick up <laughs> some breakfast sandwiches. Bang! Sound bite for you. I mean, these days we're seeing a lot of these sunglasses not on any type of sports field whatsoever. They've evolved from beyond their purely performance roots. Evolved? Yeah. Or have been forcibly <laughs> yanked. Yeah, let's say that. Athletic brands, Nike, Adidas, uh, Oakley, are some of the most popular uh, names, but there are plenty of fashion brands that are getting into these types of sunglasses. I've yet to see <laughs> a team sponsored by like a high fashion house, but that would be pretty cool. Like Balenciaga, XMLB. Or Prada and the NBA. That would be sick. That would be really I sick. I would love to see that. Yeah. To your point, Gerald, there's also like a ton of non-athletes who swear by these styles. Like Justin Bieber has been wearing the Balenciaga version of this type of sunglass pretty religiously on tour and Bad Bunny routinely sports them on the red carpets. But I think it's that element of sport influence design that makes them really cool and kind of adds a little bit of edge or like an unexpected flavor. So the first pair that I'm looking at here are from Nike. These are a pretty classic example of the silhouette cantilevered shape, super glossy finish, definitely a polarized lens and a hint of neon on either side of the temple there. So the second pair we're gonna take a look at are from Westward Leaning. How do they make you feel? They look pretty sick. I feel pretty sick. If you're, say, like running at night, they've got the yellow tint and it actually brightens things up. So depending on the color of the lenses, they'll give you, you know, better acuity in some areas and not others. So it really depends on the activity. So do you think these types of sunglasses have to be worn with running gear or gear that's specifically made for athletic performance? I don't think you have to. I've seen plenty of people look really cool in a sort of like Y2K kind of vibe. I think you'd probably agree, Gerald, that no discussion of sportier shades would be complete without mention of Oakley, which is sort of the OG when it comes to the genre. They've been making styles that, like we said, evolved from their athletic pedigree to be a staple on the street as well. The classic silhouette is the Radar EV Path, which is a little over 240 bucks. Sounds like a lot, but you get a ton of functionality and performance with one pair of shades. If you don't want to buy them new, I scooped this pair secondhand. Basic silhouette hasn't changed much over the years, but they make me feel like a multi-million dollar athlete every time I wear them. And I don't even have an endorsement deal. Not yet, at least. There's no denying how functional these are, and if there's anything that we've learned from a lot of wardrobe classics that we continue to wear today, that's kind of where icons come from, is functionality. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, these are still here decades from now. So Gerald, you're saying that I could probably pull off a pair of these. You? Yeah, sure, yeah. Okay, so if <laughs> I can pull them off, you can definitely pull them off. Yeah. So which one of these guys was your favorite? It's probably these guys right here. I think they're the most fun, but maybe not one I'd wear every day. What was yours? Honestly, I feel like my taste is a little more conventional. I dug these a lot, and I feel like I would get a lot of wear out of them. Thanks so much for watching. And if you like what you saw, you can check out all the links right below.